Good morning, listeners. Welcome to Tete Tete. I think our first Tete Tete for 2022. Um, we're wishing you again a very happy new year. Hope it's going fine for all of you. Um, I'm sure not for everyone because of the effects that the COVID-19 um, pandemic continues to have on the world and all our peoples. But in spite of this, God has allowed us into 2022 uh, with surprises, of course, but we are grateful to be alive. We are grateful for his love, for health, for food, <laughs> for those who continue to advise us and help us in the area of a healthy intake into our bodies. As we know, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we are called to take care of our body in the best way we can. And sometimes we need um, counsel. We need advice, we need help. And so this morning, we are delighted to continue our collaboration with the Grenada Food and Nutrition Council. And we have young Miss Sharice Bristol. You've heard her several times, not only on our platforms, but on other um, platforms. Uh, she continues to help us in the area of nutrition education and promotion coordinator for the Grenada Food and Nutrition Council. And she continues to do a very fine work there at the council and among all people. So we want to welcome you, um, Cherise, and we look forward as usual to education. We look forward to insight. We look forward to the creative ways <laughs> that you um, and the council are seeking to help all people to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Of course, with all these changes that are taking place, and the circumstances militating against um, even access to what we might consider a good food. <laughs> so we thank you for um, offering to be to do this program with us. The main focus is going to be setting nutrition smart goals uh, for 2022. So we welcome you and we look forward to, as usual, a very informative and educational program. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, listeners and viewers out there. Yes. So, Sharice, uh, before we step into the topic for today, we would like to speak a bit, just backtrack into 2021. You've done, you've done quite a lot of work, I know, but sometimes you wonder how do you measure the effectiveness of your work. But from the goals you would have set for 2021, how well have you achieved these goals? Yes, so um, as many of us are aware, the pandemic is still ongoing. And despite that, we were able to achieve majority of our goals 2021. And briefly, some of them, we um, in the start of the year, we conducted our annual daycare survey. So we went to the daycares and we assessed the children, their weight, their height, and their nutritional status for their age. We were able to um, provide this, um, the report to the establishments. Um, we also got our nutrition quiz done, and not just one as we had planned, but two, primary and secondary. So hopefully this year, we, we, we are hoping for the best. Um, we continue to monitor the school feeding program during the course of last year as well. So we, that was a plus for us, despite, you know, the little challenges with the COVID. But what we did not accomplish was the geriatric survey, usually done in May. And that was due to the COVID again and the restricted access to the home. So we could not, we were not able to do that um, survey. But I must say we did a nutrition in emergency disaster and man management plan and that we have for Grenada, that nutrition plan. Hopefully we'll get it on incorporated in the Ministry of Agriculture plan because they're responsible for food security and we are a statutory body under the Ministry of Agriculture. Now that plan, we were able to have sub plans. So three, one for the, the hospital services. So we had participants that took um, part in that. 
We did uh, one for the Dorothy, Dorothy Hopkins Children Home for the Disabled. So they have a sub plan on the nutrition emergency plan, as well as a geriatric home, Charles Memorial. We also got that done. So we were happy and thrilled that we were able to accomplish that. Now, in terms of public education, that was ongoing. So it took play, um, the the platforms we use were some in person were possible, but the majority was through um, the virtual means via Zoom, via Facebook, and we even use a telephone to really engage our clients because we could not um, do some of the counseling at the clinics. So we engaged them through telephone calls. So that was very good for us. We have a new recipe book that we developed last year as well. So among the other few that we had, we also have a new one and this was developed last year by the council, by our training officer. Um, in terms of training again for food preparation, we were able to do some Musa training. So that's a family of bananas, plant and blogger. So persons, they got the opportunity to know how to prepare different dishes using the Musa family. So this training was done here in Grenada and Caracol. We extended the training as well. And this was in um, collaborated with the SIA. So we and we also made well SIA. So that's under the Ministry of Agriculture again. Okay. And we um, our officer we collaborated with one of the um, agents here, a local agent in producing making a recipe for a fish burger. So hopefully you may have that on market soon from that person. They may be selling in supermarket soon, hopefully. So that we started work on and I'm very proud of that. Mm -hmm. um, usually in August, we have a curious little hands in the kitchen for the children. That's training the, you know, creative ways of preparing dishes, children friendly. But this year, last year, we were not able to achieve that due to, again, the COVID. And some of it is like part, partly because some of the parents or people were not um, signing up. They preferred the in-person than the virtual session. So they went mm -hmm. for some of the summer programs that, you know, had the children going there because I think the parents wanted a place to put the children while they are at work rather than have them at home yeah. being supervised by someone else that they may, you know, so that we didn't get last year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. You did quite a lot. <laughs> you know, sometimes <laughs> you, you just work. Yes. But you work with a team, Sharice, because you, yes. you are the face of the council uh, to the public, but collaborating with you in the council, do you have like a, a four man team or, so, okay, well, at the council, we have four main programs. So my okay. program is the nutrition, education, and promotion program. So okay. I'm the person in, at the head of that, preparing materials for the other officers that we have. Now, last year, we were also fortunate to have more persons on staff. So some were retired, and we got persons to succeed those. So we have now additional two nutritionists and we have a nutrition officer hmm. so hopefully maybe this year or in the near future we may have more nutritionists on board so that you know we have more coverage at schools clinics hospitals as well so we have the community nutrition program and that's where we have the nutrition officers so if i prepare materials for different age groups now they would go and translate that to the population. So if it's the age specific, if it's a pregnant woman, the lactating woman, they go to educate them now. So on the community base, um, we then we have the surveillance program. This officer, she conducts um, assessments. So she collects data from the general hospital on 
mainly low birth babies. We use that information to analyze the situation at home of these um, babies. If they're, they're not maybe prob- the mothers or the parents, they don't have insufficient food. So then we create a hamper, so a small food basket. And that, again, we were able to do last year throughout the year, except December, because um, our driver was on vacation. And then we had a new program on stream, collaborated with the FAO. And that was giving them some monetary contributions. And now this month, we are, we are dis- well, as I speak, the officers are out in the field distributing to those vulnerable families. So that's for the surveillance. Under the surveillance as well, we collect prices and the prices at the different parishes. We have St. Patrick, St. Andrew, Caracol, and St. George. Now the surveillance officer, she puts the information in her, in her system and we come up with a budget, um, uh, a daily meal. So how much calories and eating on a budget. So people who say they were low income, we can let them know these are the available items that you can still eat something nourishing, even if you don't have enough money. Okay. So that's the surveillance and the training program is really developing recipes with our local foods. So that's a co- and training, training daycare workers, mostly the cooks, training of the school cooks, people at different establishments if they're interested, training at the community level and the training of the children in preparing healthy meals. Mm-hmm. So that's really the team here. Right. And then we have our communication officer. Now she's the person that disperses information. So she creates articles. She prepares um, a nutri cater for the children. So a, a children's magazine or a, a, a nutrition magazine that we shared with the Ministry of Education, the pediatric ward, and this information, little games in there for the children. And she does a little mm-hmm. PSA last year. She did a few PSA for public service announcements for both the hurricane season and the Christmas season. So if you mm-hmm. heard some on GBN, that's from the council, yes. Okay, all right. Now you said quite a lot there that the council is doing uh, as a body, as an organization, and you did mention the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Agriculture, and of course our schools. But you know, one wonders, there is so much work being done there. The effect of this work on people's health in terms of the statistics, what it would show on diabetes or hypertension or uh, malnutrition or, you know, other other um, um, health issues that people suffer from. How does the council measure in terms of its effectiveness in terms of the quality of life that we see um, people are living. Okay, so... I'm not sure um, if you have the statistics, but I think we need to visit that. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, as I mentioned, with the community nutrition, they are out in the field mo- most, of, most of the time. Right? They are hardly in the office. So they are out there engaging the mothers who just given birth and uh, the women who are pregnant. So they they goal out there now is to really educate them on the benefits of why should they be changing their lifestyle, their eating habits, if that's the case, if they need to. Now, based on the reports now, so if the, the woman, they're doing blood works, then we can use that as a measure, as an indicator to say that because of this in this intervention, the officer's intervention and the action by the woman or any other person, here's a result, a better blood work, a higher um, HB level, a better A1C level, their blood pressure is better controlled if they're monitoring it because they've changed their ways. And some of the times they give testimonies, these clients. And for myself and some of the nutritionists, we do counseling at the clinics. Or here at the office, we have a dietitian, Mrs. Brown. She does counseling. And we monitor these people. So some of them, they do a first visit. 
And based on their first visit, we asked them to come back a month, maybe three months later. And they would set goals. So we work with them to set goals. And then after the, the period, the follow-up visit, we look now at a new blood work. We always work with a blood work. So that's mm -hmm. how we measure really progress. Mm -hmm. Yes, you may be changing the way you eat, but then how are we measuring it? So it could be simply um, checking your blood sugar daily at home or weekly, or it can be your blood work done every three months or six months. So we use that as a guide and say, we are doing, you know, what we really set out to do. Yes, there are some delinquents, right? Some people, they may have some barriers and that block, block is there and it prevents them from achieving their goals. So it can be a person, it can be an object, it can be anything really that prevented them. But what we are seeing that majority of the persons we are engaging, we are seeing a difference. That okay. the mothers know they are breastfeeding because you explain to me, now I am eating better, my cholesterol levels are better, my blood sugar is well on, on control now, it's no longer all high or low sometimes, it's well managed. And this is what we use as our measure. Okay. Okay. It would be wonderful for us to have the general statistics from the Ministry yes. of Health, you know, to give a... And a, for, a, in terms of the cooks, in terms of that measure, we, what we're seeing, because we did training with the cooks at the schools and at the daycare centers. So the measure, we, the indicator we use is the recording. Are they recording the meals, what they prepare? And then from that book, we can then see the change. They are preparing more vegetables okay. on a daily okay. basis now. They are serving fruit. They are giving healthier snack options. So this year, you know, because we need an indicator to measure mm. our performance, really. Good. So there's documentation. Uh, listeners yes. and viewers, in case you've just joined us, you are hearing the voice of Ms. Sharice Bristol. She is the Nutrition Education and Promotion Coordinator uh, for the Grenada Food and Nutrition Council here in Grenada. And she was just speaking of the services, the activities, and the work that is being done by the organization at the council. So let's take a short break. And when we come back, listeners, we invite your calls on 435-0143. And uh, Sharice will go into setting nutrition smart goals um, for 2022. Mm -hmm. We take a short break now.
Welcome back, listeners, to our first Tete Tete program for today, Wednesday, the 12th of January 2022. And we start off with setting nutrition smart goals. Uh, we are speaking here with Ms. Sharice Bristol, and she is the um, Nutrition Education and Promotion Coordinator for the Grenada Food and Nutrition Council. Just before we move into the main point of our program for today, I'd like to share with you a comment on our Facebook page. It says, this chat right on time. Let's promote more exercise as well as less portions on starch. Congratulations, Ms. Bristol. You are doing a great job on promoting our healthy well-being and lifestyle. So these were just two okay, comments there. thanks. <laughs> so they want you to focus to speak a bit. I guess this will be part of the smart goal. So let's wait yes. um, to see on the phone. So we now go over to Ms. Sharice and invite her now to speak on the importance of setting a nutrition smart goal. She will explain to us what she means by this word smart. Sharice? Yes. So um, welcome again. So uh, as we um, start this, we started already, but we are setting nutrition smart goals. And you may think, well, that's easy. I've done it before. But let's go back and think of 2021. What have I accomplished from those goals I set for 2021? Were they mm. nutrition related? They may not be, but were you able to accomplish them, achieve them? If not, we can maybe start over. We can start again. So this year, we can start now by setting them a better way. Smart, right? And we will go through what the smart means. So you'd have to think of some things. What, are my, what were the problems you had? So those challenges. So you write those down so you can know what I can better. Then who or what motivates you? If you know well, who or what, then that would be your guiding point for achieving those goals. Okay? And then we can, if we're looking at a, a slide here, I have a PowerPoint. So some of us, we may be at different stages, right? So in life, we are at different points. In the day, we may go from being sad to being happy, then being all gloomy in the evening. Or we can have a day of being happy all through, thanking God for all his benefits, all his glory, and all his works, and the wonderful blessings that he has upon us. So we experience different things. And in terms of goals, we, we sit and we think. And then you, you say to yourself, I won't do this. You, you have no belief in yourself. Then you move on to days pass, and I can't do this thing, you know. I can't do it. So there is still doubt. You're doubting yourself. But just trust in the Lord and he will provide. So then you said, okay, the Lord, is, he has spoken to me. <laughs> I want to do this. So I want to make my life much better. I want my wellness to be better. So I say, I want to do this. And that's a good start. Then you, you wonder, how can I do this? So you, you have the zeal to do it. You have that willpower. But how? So now you're needing more information. So you would have to get your resources. Find out, maybe talk to someone, Google something. Then you wonder, I'll try to do this, you know. I think I have enough information now. More resources, I have sufficient. So I'll try. While trying, you realize, well, I can do this. Right, And just imagine you started thinking that I won't do this, I can't do this, but you're already on your way, you can do it. And you now believe that you can. And once we have that belief, we will achieve many things. Okay? And then we have the willpower, I will do it. And eventually, at the end of this year, December 2022, God's Fear Our Life, we can then say, yes, we did it. All right. And the key is now to set in goals. They need to be a realistic. And to be realistic, it needs to be personal. So I may not set some goals and hand it to John down the road or Susan up the road. I cannot do that. 
it needs to be tailored for that person. So it needs to be for you, okay? For you, the person. You, the child. You, the woman. You, the man. Your goals. They need to have some action to it. What kind of actions? Actions in terms of when you write them down, I can do this. So in terms of action, we can say um, drinking two glasses of water before breakfast. That's an action rather than saying, oh, I'll drink water. But then you, you, mm -hmm. you tend to forget. So you have to put a specific action and we'll go to the smart goals now. So in terms of being smart, mm -hmm. you want it to be S, that's the first letter of the word smart. So it's an acronym, SMART. So you hear people are, oh, she's so smart. You can make your goals smart and brilliant. So it can be S, meaning specific. So, Cherise, yes. just one minute. We need to okay. ask the producer to oh, okay. please reflect what you're seeing on the screen. All right. Um, yes, because we so need to can see. Go to, yes, you can go to the slide nine there. It's up? Okay. All right. So it's up now. It's up? Okay. Yeah. Slide nine is up. I, okay. So I'll speak. I'm not seeing it, but I'll just speak hopefully, right? Okay. So the first letter S means specific. M, it means measurable. A, mm. it means achievable or attainable. R, it's relevant or realistic. And the last letter T means it's time bound. You know, there's a deadline. So let's look at them individually now. Mm -hmm. Specific. What does that tell you? What is it saying to you? Your goals should be very clear. So you want to ensure that you write this down and you understand it. Okay? You don't want to um, set something that if someone else reads it, they don't understand. You want to set it that is very clear to you. So in there, you may ask yourself, who, what, when, where, and why? Ask yourself those questions to be specific. And here I have an example. I will lower my LDL cholesterol from 165 to 130. That is being specific. So it tells us what am I lowering the bad cholesterol, which is the LDL. It doesn't say why here, okay? But it gives us our reason, maybe, a reasoning that that why could be it was high. So I'm bringing it down to from 165, which is extremely high, to 130. So 130, yes, is a borderline, but that's what, what you're aiming at. And try to aim where you can reach. So then that brings us to the other letter, M, measurable. Here, you want to be able to really measure your progress. So you want to set something that would tell you, am I doing this right? Am I really doing this? So you would have to use now an indicator. And earlier I mentioned we use indicators as record keeping. We use looking at the blood test as an indicator. So your indicator, if you're saying I will eat um, more vegetables daily. Now that's not so specific. But if you're saying I'll, I'll eat one cup of vegetables every day for lunch, that's be more specific. And how I'm measuring that now would be writing in a journal. Monday, this is what I ate for lunch because you're looking at your lunch, you said. If you want, you can extend it to breakfast and dinner. Then you will say, hey, I will have overachieved because I ate every day at lunch, also at breakfast, right? So we want an indicator how to measure a goal. And the example I have here, I will monitor my blood cholesterol every three months. So before we measure, um, we set a specific measuring um, to get the cholesterol, the LDL from 165 to 130. How are we going to know if it's going down? By doing a, a follow up a blood test in three months. So there I would see that it's going down. So by the end of the year, so maybe by 2022, November, or maybe September even, 
you can see now it's almost there. It may be about 140. You say, okay, it's close to 130. All right? So you'll get there. Then we have the other letter, A. Achievable or attainable. Think clearly. Think about this letter. Achievable. Can I achieve this? So to be successful, your nutrition goals need to be within your reach. Don't set something that you can't even accomplish. So some people may say, I want to lose 40 pounds. And their measurable um, indicator would be to take my weight every week. But for yourself, you know, wait, I do not have access to a scale. I live so far from the clinic. I can't get to the clinic. So that would not be achievable because you said that it may be possible, but you, you don't have that resource. Okay. So when you set it, think about what you say on a scale one to five or on a scale one to 10, how confident are you in achieving this? So if you say I'm um, about two out of five, you're, you're not there yet. If you say four out of five, yes, you're there. Or if you say eight out of 10 or nine out of 10, you're very confident, then you can achieve this. So think about it, right? So once you have the tools available, do you have a notebook and pen because you say you'll record this? Okay, that's possible. You have a skill to check your weight, that's possible. You have um, vegetables at home that you can eat on a constant, or you have someone that can supply to you, then you can say, yes, I can eat that. All right? So we have mm -hmm. to set things that we are able to achieve. And always start small. Do not force yourself and start big and say, oh, you know, you see, I didn't, and you feel discouraged. So start it small enough. So any small goal that you set, at the end, you'll feel well accomplished. And you can praise yourself, congratulate yourself because you've done it. Instead mm -hmm. of setting something so big and then you're halfway there and you feel discouraged that you didn't do anything. Stop. Go back, relook at your goal and start again. Okay? So the example I have for achievable. I will reduce my daily intake of saturated fat by 50%. Now, saturated fat is the one that's responsible for bringing your bad cholesterol, we mentioned earlier, the LDL, that high. So we are going to cut back on the foods that are high in that. And what are they? Mostly in animal products. So we think of those meats, red meat especially. So the beef, the pork, the sausage, the salami, these things are high in saturated fat. Then we think of the pastries, the currant roll, the cheese roll, these pastries, they are high in saturated fat. Also, the margarine and the uh, shortening, they were made with vegetable oil, but then they got hard. So that makes them, their properties change now. So it makes it a bad food, really, for your heart and your cholesterol. So you would, if you usually use, say, one pot spoon of that in a day, then you cut it down to half because you said, I'm going to reduce it by half. So if you can't go there, maybe by three quarter or by a quarter. So whatever you can achieve, start small, remember. But we're not going to start small and stay there. So we can start for a few weeks at that small rate. And then, so, so if we're increasing our vegetable intake, only at lunch. For a month, we're doing that. Then the next month, we can now move to breakfast and lunch. Then we can move it to the portion. So if we're only having half cup, then we could move to one cup. Okay? So that's how we are going to achieve smart goals rally. Then the next letter is R, realistic or relevant. Your behavioral goals here should be relevant to your outcome goals. So if you say, I want my LDL to be lowered, you're setting goals in terms of making that cholesterol low. You're not going to say, I am going to watch TV to lower my cholesterol. That's not relevant. Okay. You want it to be relevant to what you want to achieve. 
So you maybe want to exercise rather than sitting, watching TV. So that would be more relevant, exercising, right? Doing some physical movement or eating more fiber-rich foods, your whole grain products, right? Your baked potatoes with skin on it, more vegetables. This is how you're going to get your cholesterol down. That would be relevant. Now, again, it can mean that we have family members or friends that they encourage us to do good. And some of them, they, they don't encourage us at all. So instead, they encourage us to do the opposite of what we try to accomplish. So sometimes we go out to a function and you're already saying, I am not drinking any alcoholic beverage, no beer, no wine. But here comes your friend and they're saying, what's wrong with you? Just one glass. And that one glass can turn into two, three, four. By the time you figure yourself out, you're having every single day or every weekend you're drinking and your goals now is all, all gone, right? So you, you're not able to accomplish that. So maybe speak to people that are close to you so they can really encourage you. Let them know your goals, right? Let them be aware of it. Once they know, okay, she, she has a problem with her cholesterol, I would not bring any fried foods for her. I would not bring any fried foods for him. My child um, has a heavier weight than a, a child, another child for his or her age. I would avoid my child from eating these sweet snacks. I would not buy these sweet snacks and put in the house so they don't have access to it. So try to make it relevant to the situation at hand, okay? Mm -hmm. So the example I have is to lower my chance of heart disease by 10%. Now, the cholesterol was high, but why is this relevant to me? It is relevant because I have a family history of heart disease. So because I'm making this step, taking this action now, I'll reduce my chance of getting heart disease by 10% because I'll be eating better and I'll be recording this thing, okay? So this is the commitment here. And you would have much commitment when we set these types of goals, okay? Mm -hmm. And then we have our last letter, T, time-oriented. Smart goals need to have a time. They need to be, there need to be a deadline. So you can't set a goal and say, I want to lose two pounds. I want to lose five pounds. When do you want to lose this? So you need a deadline. I want to lose 20 pounds by August. I want to gain some muscle by April. You set a deadline. So when April comes and you monitor that progress, did I accomplish this? I did. If you did not, then look back and see where did, where did you lapse? Where did you fall short? What happened? And then you can correct it. Don't feel discouraged. Don't give up at all. You can continue. Okay? So it's better we try, we try and fail than we fail to try. So let's try and try and we'll get there. Okay? And you'll be saying, wow, I've been doing this the wrong way all these years. So this time I will do it better. And I'm so grateful for this information. And here I will set better goals. And the example I have here for the time, I will have a normal LDL in six months. So you give yourself six months to do this. So once you have a deadline, you know, okay, I have to work on this. You know, at work for some of us, we have deadlines to send in a report or so. And sometimes we wait until the last minute. Children at school, they have an exam. They know two weeks before, but the night before the exam, that's when they're studying. And then they get a result that they're displeased about because this is not really what they really wanted. But when we have deadlines, we have to plan. So if you know you have that exam, you know, okay, every day for 30 minutes, I will study two pages, right? So co coming up now, maybe the night before, you should be resting. 
two nights before you can be, how you can have mommy or daddy or grandma or someone just drilling you, ask you some questions so you can really get the points you deserve on the exam. And that's the same with nutrition goals. You set this deadline, I would eat better to lower my cholesterol level, get my cholesterol level down to normal range. But what are you doing coming up? Right? So from January, February, are you just sitting back waiting for a miracle to happen? God helps those who help themselves. So we helping ourselves by doing the action, actionable duties. So what are we doing? We eating more fiber foods. We are going to exercise, maybe get a friend to walk with us, to go on the beach for maybe a swim. So if you know you have a friend that does this, you call them and say, can I join you? There you have your motivation. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. that was, <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here and I say, well, we were in class. <laughs> 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 we have to listen to the teacher. Yeah. I mean, that whole question of listening, and you would know if we were listening by putting what you have, have, um, have taught to us, in a sense, into action. And um, there were a couple of questions that came as you were speaking. Okay. So most people are uh, told that you need to consult your doctor um, mm -hmm. because of your situation. You don't just enter into an exercise program True. or um, make certain, you know, adjustments without consulting your doctor. Always. And that's important as well. Yes. yes. So, yes, when in terms of physical activity, if we know we have maybe some back issue, some knee issue, especially these kind of things, you consult your physiotherapist, your doctor, about which kind of exercise can I engage in. Mm -hmm. Now, some of us, we don't have those issues at all, right? And may, you may not really have the need to, but for precaution, you may have to, right? Consult your doctor and ask which kind of exercise can I do. The safest of all would be swimming, really, right? So not much pressure is involved there. In terms of doing the physical lifting and so, this one is a strength training. So you may want to know my bones or my muscles, are they working well? Can I withstand? How much weight can I lift? Okay, so you may know that. You may want to know that. My heart, this is how my heart functions. But what can I do cardio? For how long can I do it? So this you can ask your doctor. And please ask them all these questions. Because sometimes, yes, the nutritionists, we, we see persons as well. But there are certain questions we cannot really advise you on. So do not save these questions for us, right? We give the general guidelines. We more focus on the diet. Once a doctor diagnoses you with a condition, we say, hey, this is what you're going to have because you're taking this medication and this is your condition. So these are the foods you are most likely are encouraged to eat and you may want to avoid these foods on this list here. So in terms of physical activity, we can say engage, but your doctor would let you know how much, what kind you can do. Thanks. I think this is, uh, well, what's saying, it's very important for us to understand. And just before we wrap this session, um, the whole question of being decisive as a person, using your, your mind, your reason, you know, you are not, you have to be decisive. You have to be serious. You have to want what you have just um, offered us here. And, um, there could be so much militating against what is good for us, you know, even as children, they, they resist and, and adults too. We are so yes. steeped in our ways. So you're already challenging us to, um, to look again, you know, at our condition, at our, at our status, if mm -hmm. I should put that word, and to really think again, um, how I can start again. That was a lovely way you, introduced it we can start again you know yes. yes we've been frustrated but we can start again uh using what we have just been advised here smart goals uh to the s specific m they must be measurable and you advise the journal achievable or attainable um realistic or relevant and there should be some timeline for achieving these goals 
So we're going to take a short break here and listeners and viewers um, from what um, the feedback is that this is a well needed program, always um, programs on health are very, very well needed. So uh, we thank you for the work you are doing. And at this point, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we will um, continue um, for the mm -hmm. couple minutes we have again. Take a short break. Welcome back, listeners, to our Tete -tete program for today with Ms. Sharice Bristol, the Nutrition Education and Promotion Coordinator uh, for the Renata Food and Nutrition Council. And she's been sharing with us on so much that we need to be aware of when it comes to taking care of ourselves. And has shared with us very beautifully on this term of SMART goals, S M A R T and have the meaning, it's an acrostic, which means S for specific, your goals must be measurable, you're encouraged to journal, um, they must be achievable or attainable, they must be realistic and relevant, and they must have a timeline for achieving these goals. Um, someone asked during the break, you mentioned about this saturated fat, which is a, a threat to our heart and uh, um, the bad cholesterol. And people are so used to you to their margarine and their lard. I don't know if lard is still breaking, but when I was growing up, lard was very present. And um, they use it for baking and, and, and so on, butter the bread and so on. So do you have a suggestion? Is that is that bad? It's so bad. What do you have to replace that? Someone okay. needs to be advised. So let me first um, address, um, you know, saturated fat and why it's so not so healthy. So first of all, it is tasty. Fat is tasty. It helps <laughs> us to feel full, right? Without fat in food, there's, it's not it's like a bland food, you would say. So it gives us flavor and that's what we enjoy. That's why we enjoy the pastries and so. But then we have categories of fat. We have those that are unhealthy. So we, we want to have some of it, but not so much. And then the healthy ones that are so healthy for the heart, especially avoiding the clogging of the heart and preventing cardiovascular diseases. Now, yes, earlier I did mention um, just a few examples of the saturated. And I'll go through again. So the saturated one are mostly found in animal products and all of the animals you can think about, especially on land. Those in the sea, they are healthy ones. They have good fats in them. 
mm-hmm. those on land from the cow, the the pigs, the chicken, especially with the skin and the fat, the visible fat, if you're not removing those, you're putting more saturated fat in your body. Then we have the plant-based bad fats, right? They are... Um, years ago, we've heard of coconut oil being, you know, not so healthy for us. And now we're hearing it's healthy. But when I was studying Morocco, I studied that it was healthy. So maybe it was in the 60s, 50s, 40s, that era, right? But it is a healthy fat, but it's a saturated fat. Why it is healthy? It's not being used as the other fats, really, from the animal products. This coconut oil, it gets in the body and the body works with it. So it gets broken. It's not processed and stored like the other one. So the body used that one as for energy. So mm. which is why we encourage it. Good for Alzheimer's disease, good on the ketogenic diet, people who have a high fat diet and trying to lose weight, good for that. We have palm oil. This one, we may see it in the African films, Right. And you hear more, more, mainly you may hear the palm wine, but there's palm oil and that is a saturated oil. Then we have a bad one that you don't want at all in your diet, but we are still having it. That's trans fat. And this here is found in our margarine. This one is very damaging for the, uh, the heart, especially margarine and shortening. And we use this to fry our meats to fry our products, to add in our baking goods. And why is that? It's shelf stable, so it lasts long. So you would see pastries on the shelf and you wonder how this thing not going yet. But it's because of this, because they add hydrogenated oil, so they partially, so taking a vegetable oil that is so healthy and they make it into a solid um, substance. And that solid substance now is not so healthy. It contains the trans fat. Mm-hmm. And that trans fat is also found in our baked goods. So once we start cooking and we're making cookies and we're eating the fast foods, we are taking in trans fat. Now, what can we replace now those with? We can have avocado that we have in Grenada on the trees, or we can buy in the supermarket. Some of us, if we can afford, we can buy the olive oil. So this one is a very healthy oil. Okay. We can eat the nuts, nuts and seeds. So try to go easy with the salt. So maybe not salted version, maybe lightly salted or unsalted nuts and seeds. So pumpkin seeds, when we have so much pumpkin. Last year I heard, especially Carol, who said they had so much pumpkin. What did they do with the seeds? Right, you can bake the seeds. So wash the seeds, remove those pulp, and bake it on a sheet. So just put it in the oven, and you have your lovely snack option: your pumpkin seeds. Mm -hmm. Now the sesame seeds that some of us we put in our bread, we put in our punches. This is a healthy fat option as well. So there are so much substitutes. Also, Mm. we have I mentioned the seafood. So all the fish in the sea. Right, we have some fatty fish and we have some less fatty fish, but their fat is healthy options. So we have the omega threes in there, and this is what we want. Canola oil is a healthy fat substitute. So if you don't, if you instead of using lard and butter and margarine, you can use your oils, your vegetable oil, and mm-hmm. that is canola oil, corn oil. We can use the um, sunflower oil. Olive oil, these are much better to use, okay? And if mm-hmm. we're making downy of our punch and so, the sesame seed, the chia seed, the flax seeds, put that in there and you can get your healthy fat option. What about, um, there's a difference with margarine and butter. Is there? <laughs> Someone said margarine, margarine is bit. not butter. Someone said margarine is not butter. That's true. So we have butter, right? So the butter here is made from animal fat, right? Okay. So the milk they use from the dairy products to make butter. And it is, mm. and some, um, some companies, what they do, they reduce the fat content. 
So you may see some says low fat or reduced fat. You can go for those options. And when it comes of um, the, the texture, if you're looking for spreads and so, go for the soft spread, not those hard, solid ones. Those okay. who have more of the bad okay. fat, the unhealthy one. Now, the margarine is vegetable oil. Remember I said this before. Vegetable mm -hmm. oil that they, they did some hydrogenation, and that changes the, um, this consistency, the look of it, the apparent, and makes it into a solid. Okay. So then you have a solid block. Okay. Right, you have something that is at room temperature, it's solid particles, not and no longer liquid, so it's no longer runny, it's okay. solid. Mm -hmm. And just think of coconut oil at room temperature is it um liquidy? Yes, but when mm -hmm. it goes in the cooler, it gets solid. That's okay. what it's, it is a saturated fat. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, well, thank you for that. I know there was a lot of pumpkins this year, and I'm not sure if we just threw the seeds back in the land, mm. or we just, you know, um, to get another, <laughs> another yes. year. Yes, because when but, we think uh, of food security, and we have, Grenada yeah. has so much food, yes, and the wastage, and so much things we could do with all the different parts of the plant. Mm -hmm. And if we are not educated on it, and we are not aware, then chances are it's in the trash. Mm -hmm. Or maybe some mm -hmm. people, they may have a, um, a, a organics, they're making a manual, you know, so that would be good. But for those who just throwing it away, mm. you know, the wastage. Yes. And then the buying. So for this year, try to buy what you need. Mm -hmm. If you know you're alone at home and you, you don't cook so much, don't buy too much because chances are you may not have yes. the space to put it and then right. it will spoil. Yes. And try to buy fresh produce, buy some ripe, buy some green. So the ripe ones, you will be able to use mm -hmm. that few days. And then the green ones, when your ripe ones are finished, they start yes. ripening. So right. you have, you have it there. Smart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, there, there's a question before we wrap this, but um, well, not a question, but a comment. Okay. Families and individuals need to do planning of their meals and providing providing for the same provision for the same. In other words, this this person is making the comment of the importance of families planning their meal for the week yes yes no? and okay, i yes last year a few programs we did some meal planning sessions mm -hmm. right and this really is important and just as i mentioned the meal planning know what your your um your family the feeding population is so if you have a family of five we also have a calculation here so if you're interested you can reach out so we know we have a um uh, to tell you how much of rice, how much flour you should be buying, how okay. much pounds of that to last you for a week or for a day. Okay. So mm -hmm. you would not overbuy. Okay. Right. And this mm -hmm. is very yes. important. Mm -hmm. And then you, you get an idea of the allergies. So if someone is allergic to that, then you know I'm not buying any nuts to put in the house. I'm not using that in my recipe. I would not be using any milk. I may put it in mind because how much of my family members, you know, they are allergic to this. So know what you're feeding properly. Maybe now you have roommates you, mm -hmm. and you may cook together, but know what each other eats. So then you would not have wastage. Sometimes, mm -hmm. yes, we may have some older persons. They may say, I feel for some soup today. You prepare yeah. it and then they don't feel too. But right away, you can put it in the refrigerator or you can freeze and have it at another time. Okay. Right. So remember, right. we have to avoid wastage and buy containers that you can store these foods in so that, you know, we can prolong, you know, that sustainability of having our food supply there and family food security, we can see. Right. Yes. Yes. And as a nation, we shall, we shall do well. Yes. Wow. I think this was a very, very informative and, um, educational program, uh, solid content, you know, we really thank you for taking the time and patience because I guess as a nutrition um, educator, 
you ought to have patience <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in the way you you give the material and when you encounter your 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 clients or the persons that you serve and we're happy to know that um we can access the facilities at the Grenada Food and Nutrition Council. Um, yes. We can give the, 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 the number is 440-2126. If you wish to reach the Grenada Food and Nutrition Council, they offer many services there. And I spoke to a very uh, wonderful young man yesterday when I called for you, Sharice. Yeah. He answered the phone very, very well and very accommodating, yeah. welcoming. And this makes a big, big difference when... Um, you will meet people like that, you know, as the first contact for the um, organization. Yeah. So thank you very much for the work that the organization is doing. And we look forward uh, to that continuous um, education, nutrition education and promotion, you know, which is very necessary for all of us. So mm -hmm. thank you. And listeners, remember the smart goals to set yourself sales for 2022 it's not easy uh, many times we fail but we are encouraged to start again because you are not the only person struggling <laughs> to break a habit you know which has become part of you it's not easy to break those mm -hmm. ingrained habits but we mm -hmm. can start again with the encouragement and the motivation and there are persons there willing to join us um, for that to achieve that smart goal all right. Yes. So remember, set your goals and work your goals. It's possible. And many people share the testimony of how they worked on it. So we look forward to seeing you again and to continue this education, which is an ongoing process. So I've been your yes. host, Rutina Victor. We thank you, all our listeners and viewers, those of you participating, and those who will check the program later on. You can post your comment on the Diocese and Facebook page. And you who you look at YouTube, we sometimes forget we have a YouTube um, channel as well so that people can mm -hmm. access our programs there. So, Sharice, all the very best. Thank um, you so much. Thank yeah. you for having me again. Yes. And for the first time for the year again. Oh, <laughs> so. you've graced us. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, I hope you open a yeah. good road for others who would follow. All right. For really. our God program. bless you all. Thank Thanks. you so much. God You're bless. welcome. So nice. listeners and viewers, thank you. Oh, oh, it's Sister Maureen's birthday today. Okay. okay. We know it's Sister Maureen. Sister Maureen is visiting. She's doing visitation um, of uh, our communities here. That's St. Joseph's Convent in Grenville and St. George's. And the work of the Clooney sisters is exemplary. Mm -hmm. I think we can repay them for all that they have done and continue to do for for the world, let's put it that way. So Sister Maureen, we're happy to know that you are here on the land. We hope to speak to you sometime and we want to extend to you a very, very happy birthday. May God continue to bless you and may you continue to find joy in his service. Yeah. God bless you. And thank you again, Cherise. Yes, thank we'll you so you much. Again. Welcome. Yes. I am the living bread come down from heaven. 